Welcome back guys, I'm JFM and this is The Big Cheese. Thank you very much to everybody that has reached out and everybody that has viewed, liked, subscribed to my first ever video, The Big Cheese, following the journeys of myself and FC Basil. I just want to have a massive shout out to all of you that have fed back and had a little input and sort of spent time to have a look at the first video and just let me know what you thought, that is absolutely brilliant. If you haven't subscribed already, please Hit that subscribe button below so you can below so you can stay updated to any other episodes or any other series that get posted. In today's episode, I'm going to take you through what we have been up to during pre-season, during the transfer window, and during the opening fixtures of our campaign. So let's get straight into it. As you can see, we are on a brilliant winning run. If you take a little look at this up here, we beat Lask 2-0. Wahen 4-0 in the cup and then we went on to then beat Bruges 3-1 and 1-0, 4-1 in the Champions League respectively and then we've just come off the back of a 4-1 win in the league. Now I know what you're all thinking, did he make it, didn't he make it, we're going to find out. But first and foremost I'm going to take you through a little bit of an overview of our squad so far and we're just going to dive straight into it. So we go straight into our squad and if you have a look at our squad I'm very very chuffed with the current ability and the look of the potential ability at present. There have been a couple of additions to the squad as well as there have been a couple of exclusions. So we have been actively trying to move players on to free up wage budgets, to free up transfer budgets so we can bring in that gulf of quality going forward. Now let's have a look at the starting 11 here or the 11 players that are currently picked uh, within the selection. Um, again, this is potentially all pretty much our strongest 11. We'll take a little look at a couple of players, a couple of players that stand out to us. So have a look at Jonas Ullman. Jonas Omlin is our starting goalkeeper. He does play as a sweeper keeper defence and he is very, very good. Let's just have a quick look at how he is doing currently this season. He has played five games. He has conceded three goals and he is on an average of 6.78 and kept two clean sheets. That's not too bad in five games. Now let's take a little dive into our defence. I'm going to choose one player from each position. So let's go on to Omar Adelaide. And Omar Adelaide, sorry, is a Paraguayan 22-year-old centre-back. He don't mess about. Eden 16. His head is like a fridge freezer door. He's got marking a 14 and tackling a 15. Again, positioning 13, bravery 16, composure of 13. The only thing that he is lacking is his vision, else he would be a perfect ball-playing defender. Let's just tap into his history. Let's have a little look. We signed him for 850k. He was already at the club when I joined, so that was one signing that was made before the season started. He has made five appearances, scored two goals, and is averaging a 7.34. Let's take a little look into our midfield. I'm going to class centre defence midfield and centre midfield as two different positions. Simply because I want to show you Fabian Frey. Fabian Frey has been what I said he was going to be. An absolute brick in this deep line playmaker defend role. I am playing in defensive. His positioning is 12. But because he is sitting in that hole. He rarely gets caught out of position. Let's go on to history. Now he has made 5 appearances. And he has averaged a six point, uh, sorry, a 7.64. Now going into our centre midfield role. I'm going to show you Lucas Sufil. Lucas Ufel is the David Beckham of our team. He takes corners, he takes penalties, he takes free kicks, and he'd probably take goal kicks and throw-ins if, if you'd let him. Let's just go on to history. Again, five appearances, two assists, three player of the match, 8.10. That is an 8.10. And let's go to our striker, Arthur Cabral. Arthur Cabral, I was very hit and miss. I was playing him as a complete forward. I was playing him as an advanced forward. I didn't know where he was best going to be suited within within the, t within the side and, and what player role. But we go into his history. He's playing on a seven, two assists, one goal in five appearances. We have had goals from elsewhere, so I will show you that in a minute. But again, very happy with the direction he's going in. Now let's have a little look at the squad dynamics. The team cohesion is looking pretty good. The team's collective mental state has been improved. This will improve in player positioning during matches. Players will experience an improvement to their vision and reactions to events unfolding when playing. Now let's have a look at the dressing room atmosphere. Now within the dressing room atmosphere, it wasn't that great when I came in. It is now coming up to being very good. We are currently five game win run. Very, very happy. And again, 
a lot of players are similar age, so a lot of players can relate to similar experiences and similar things going on at the minute. And we have got very good managerial support. Um, we've got a good, strong influence over a number of players and a very good relationship or very strong relationship with a number of players. Let me just take you back to um, our overview. I know I could have just clicked the club info tab, but I really couldn't be bothered. Um, again, we are going to go down and have a look at the captain. We have changed vice captain. We have got Talent Zaka in as our vice captain. And then key player, Lucas Suffer. Again, I need I say no more with an 8.10. Let me take you straight into my tactics and going into our tactics. We have stuck with the tick attacker. We have probably got around about 92% familiarity. Intensity is probably at around about 75%, 70 to 75%. And look at these look at these lines forming. If it wasn't for the fact that Stocker was injured at the start of the season, there would be a green line there as well. I'm very, very happy with the cohesion of the team. I'm very, very happy with how we're looking going forward. Again, I gave you a tactical overview. Not much has changed since the last episode. We haven't changed anything. We have just stuck and we have gone to attacking. Because I feel with positive, playing positive and a possession-based football, you concentrate so much on keeping the ball, you rarely want to attempt to give it away. So if you've got that attacking dynamic or that attacking mentality on, you're more than likely to go and, and, and put the ball in the box and try and score a few bloody goals. Let's go on to our team report. Our best 11 here is the 11 that are pretty much picked within, um, within that starting lineup. Again, except for Gio Gravo. And Gio Gravo has come in when uh, Stocker was injured and he was, he's been playing on this right-hand side as an inverted winger. And let's just have a look at his history. Again, he's on loan from us, from Genk. He has played on 6.9, five appearances, one goal. He is not doing too shabby. Now let's go have a look at our staff. We talked about needing to approve our staff in and bringing in the likes of an attacking coach, a defensive coach, and either a fitness coach or a goalkeeping coach. We have done that. We have now got the highest average in the Swiss Super League across the board. One thing we're going to look at next is our recruitment team and then potentially just improving that physio part on the medical team. But as things stand, I am very, very happy. Now we take a little look at our training. We are currently training the tick attacker tactic. I am very much um, a connoisseur of leaving things as they are with the tactics. If they are not broken, then why try to fix them? Now... All of you are probably wondering, well, how's he been doing this season? How's he been getting on? Let me just take you back to the tactics screen. And let me just show you my average rating and the last five games played. Look at that green. Everyone loves to see it. I've not seen so much green since I spent the night with Bob Marley. Look at that. That is incredible. Now, let's go back. and I'm going to take you now into our schedule. So, let's dive right into our schedule and let's have a look and see how we got on during pre-season and for the open five league games of the season in and around those five league games we did have champions league qualifiers we did have uh swiss cup fixtures so i kind of went down the list and thought right we'll get the five league games we'll get them out of the way with and then we'll, we'll approach it and then we'll we'll get something going so let's just have a look our friendly we did pretty well friendlies again are all about making sure you're Training that philosophy, making sure the team cohesion is right, and also making sure that you're keeping on top of your match condition, your match sharpness, which we did. We were absolutely incredible with that. Um, again, I drew 0 0 against Marseille. I played our strongest 11, and I come away happy thinking Marseille are probably on paper a better outfit than Basel. And I just thought, if we can hold our own against Marseille, then I think we stand a chance to do half decent in Europe so we've, we've we went on that and we, we kept things and we kept consistency consistency is key we did rotate an A team or a B team or start an 11 and a backup 11 in different games just for the fitness and it's good because in the cups I do like to float around with different um, starting 11s again we won the friendly cup semi-final we went on we did a Spurs we won the friendly cup so that's one cup in in the bag this season um, and then we we won our last friendly against UPenn, in which we played a mix of players based on their match condition, their match sharpness, just to get it up. So we started our first league game against local rivals FC Zurich, and in which we won 2-1. Uh, again, we played Victor Pizan in the Champions League, best place second qualifier. 
We won 2-0 in the first leg, and we won 2-1 in the second leg, going through 4-1 on aggregate. But we hit a bump in the road. We lost 1-0 at home to St. Gallien in the Super League, which is the Swiss League. And then we went on a nice little spree. Uh, 1-0 against Thun. We beat Lask 4-0 and 2-0. So we beat them 6-0 on aggregate in the third qualifying round of the Champions League. In between that, we beat Son 2-0. And then we beat Wallen 4-0 in the Swiss Cup first round. Very, very pleased with the players that came into the team. Again, that was very much the backup 11. Uh, we beat Club Bruges away 3-1 in the Champions Cup best place to play off leg one. And then we went on to beat Lurzen 4-1 in the Swiss Super League. And then the penultimate game that I played was, um, or the final game that I played, sorry, was Club Bruges. And we beat them 1-0 at home with a last-minute winner coming from Edon Jerikovo. And again, that put us into the Champions League proper. But before we get there, I'm just going to show you a little bit about the ins and outs that we've done this season and how we've got there. So let's go on to our transfers. We're going to go to transfer history. Let's go into transfer history there. So leading up to this point, the top four were players that were already bought in before I started the save. Again, we could probably talk about, let's say, from round about here, downwards is where we've been in regards to excluding players or getting rid of players. So one thing I identified that we needed to do coming into this save when I looked at the overview of the squad, we needed another right back. So we bought in Thierry Corriera, or Thierry Correra from Valencia on loan. His attributes look pretty decent. I think he has got bags of bags of potential in front of him. He is now on par with our with our starting right back. So it's going to be interesting that little duel they're going to have amongst the season. He is very much going to be playing in the sort of Swiss Cup. Again, he is going to be back up in case of any injuries. But if he plays well, if his average rating is higher than my other right back, then of course he's got half a chance. He's got more than half a chance. It is solely based on average rating throughout the whole season. He can play as a wing back, which is great. I love playing wing backs. They stick out wide, get on the overlap, allow the inside forwards, inside wingers to cut in and make underlapping runs and literally leave defenders not knowing their ass from their elbow. Again, we obviously moved a few players on in regards to centre midfield and things like that. Players that weren't going to cut it. Players that were just going to sit there and chunk up the wage bill, really. So we ended up going out and signing Jean Lucas. A Brazilian from um, Lyon on loan again. He has come into the side and he is a perfect Mazea for my system. I am playing him as a Mazea attack, but still, he fits it very, very well. The only thing he lacks is the finishing, but he's got a decent long shot on him and he scored a couple of worldies so far this season. Let's go into his overview and let's have a look at his history. He has played five games, he had scored two goals and he is averaging a rating of 7.22. I'm very, very happy with that acquisition. And then last but not least, we needed an, another attacking midfield left. We, we didn't really have an out-and-out -out winger on the left. Um, again, it's always good to be able to change it up between winger and inside forward. So we went out and signed a young, well, say young. He's sort of, he's sort of at, at the midpoint of his career now, Ricardo Kishner. Ricardo Kishner was touted as going to be in one of the best left wingers that came out of Ajax. Um, he had so much potential in previous football manager saves. Everybody, I think I, I signed him lots of times and everybody signed him. And he's not been doing too great as of late in his personal career or in, in his actual footballing career. He has not quite reached that potential. I don't want him to become another Jesse Lingard where people turn around at the age of 28 and say, oh, he's still young. He needs to start and he needs to act now. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you Ricardo Kishner. His technical abilities are up there. They are absolutely fantastic. And if you have a look at his mental abilities or his mental attributes as well, flair 18, determination 16, off the ball 50. He is your perfect winger. I do play him as an inside forward. He has been scoring goals, so it has been working. Now I've given you an overview of what we've done so far this season, and I've given you an overview of where we are at. We are competing on all fronts. We are currently sitting top of the Swiss League with five games played. We are currently sitting in the group stage draw of the UEFA Champions League. And we are through to the next round of the Swiss Cup. 
Again, I'm very, very happy with the direction we're going in. And I'm very, very happy with the players and their average ratings and their performances on show. So I did promise you something special at the start of this episode. And here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the UEFA Champions League group stage draw. Sit back, relax and enjoy. In Group A, <coughs> Liverpool. Chelsea go into Group B. City into Group C. Paris Saint-Germain, Group D. FC Bayern in Group E. Group F, Barcelona. Group G, Zenit St. Petersburg. And Group H, Juventus. Benfica join Liverpool. Ajax join Chelsea. Shakhtar Donetsk join Man City. Real Madrid join Paris Saint-Germain. Wow. Spurs in with Bayern. Dortmund in with Barcelona. Napoli with Zenit. And Atletico Madrid with Juve. Woo! Wow. So, um, Red Bull Salzburg in with Liverpool. Valencia in the Group B. Lyon in Group C. Leverkusen D. Inter E. Dynamo Kiev Group F. Celtic into Group G. And FC Basel. We have gone into the group with Juventus and Atletico Madrid. Genk finish off Group A as do Galatasaray Group B. Pantheon Icos or PAOK, I do apologise, Group C, Dynamo Zagreb, Group D, Lille, Group E, Atalanta, let's go down, <laughs> too quick for me, Atalanta have gone into Group F, and Red Bull Lesbig have gone into Group G, and Locomotive Moscow have gone into Group H, there we have it guys, that is our Champions League draw, our UEFA Champions League draw, which have pitted us with Locomotive Moscow, Atletico Madrid, and Juventus. God knows how we're going to get on. Let's just hope for the best. I'm, I'm remaining optimistic, but at the same time, I know we've got some very, very tricky, tricky fixtures going on in that league. Again, let's just see what happens. So I've been JFM. You have been awesome. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Your feedback, again, is very, very important because it helps me grow and it helps me develop the next episode. I hope this has not been too long. I hope I haven't been too short again. I hope I've covered some key areas. We'll be back in 10 games time to let you know how we're getting on during the remainder of the season. Again, you've been absolutely amazing. Please, please, please check the social links out in the description. Stay safe, stay well, 